uh, really excited to get started and a um, few, few reminders here. First of all, just want to say thank you to our 2022 sponsors. Um, they invested in the weed community and they've been making sessions like this possible. So a big, big thank you for everybody who is supporting Weave um, to make sessions like today possible. So coming up at Weave, we do have two um, events that are on our radar for this month and next. Uh, the end of this month, we are gonna be doing a CalWorks webinar. It's called Cal Savers for Business. Um, it's for uh, businesses with five or more employees, and you can sign up on our website. It's weaveonline.org, and if you just go to the events bar, you'll be able to see that information, as well as upcoming uh, Strong Women, Strong Coffee events, and, um, and then also you can always find out about what's going on here at Weave through our socials. So make sure that you do follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And then we also are holding a really fabulous event in May. This is a ticketed fundraiser. It's in celebration of our CEO Emeritus, our founder, Marsha Bailey. Uh, and to find out more information on that, you can also go to our website. So thanks everybody for coming this morning. Uh, my name is Allie Warner. I'm the volunteer manager here at Weave. And I'm so excited for today's conversation. Um, the theme, of course, is environmentalism. And of course, that aligns with April being Earth Month. So last night, I ended up just looking up, you know, what is, um, you know, what, what is Earth Month? I kind of just wanted to have this, like, definition to really sort of set the context. So I wanted to read a quote to everyone to kind of get things started. And... So, April marks volunteer months, a time to focus on the challenges our planet is facing while propelling new ideas forward will, will create lasting positive impact on our future. And, you know, what I really liked about this quote is that it focuses on the positive things that we can do. And, you know, it's important to be informed and to, you know, read the IPCC reports, understand what is happening in the world, but also understand that it's not too late. And if we keep things positive, we can make change now. And it's important to be able to move things forward, be realistic, but understand that we can still make change. And that's part of the reason I was really excited that Erica Morris uh, from the Eco Store is joining us today. Um, Erica has just a really fabulous blend of a deep technical background when it comes to environmentalism and her backgrounds in environmental science and, um, in systems policy, but obviously also, you know, a passion of making those things accessible and through her store, through her business, through her ideas, uh, connections and community, um, you can tell that she really takes pride in having these be things that are accessible for everybody. So very excited to get started. And um, Erica, if you'd like to take a minute to introduce yourself and maybe you can tell us a little bit about, you know, hi, um, how you got started and, you know, why you started your business and your path to become an entrepreneur. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me here. This is very fun. Um, Basically, I had never dreamed of being an entrepreneur, but my husband did. So I started by um, going to school. I got a degree in environmental science and systems policy. And always I'm very conscious about, you know, how we can treat our earth in a respectful and good way. I remember saving the whales when I was like 10, like all kinds of like fun stuff growing up. But I did want to make it something that is a lifestyle choice. And my husband is a contractor and I supported him in his business. And we both wanted to kind of transition out of that and focus more on something positive and um, basically something that is giving back to the community in a more uh, helpful way. So we both love the ocean. We have um, a passion for that. And this was a wonderful way of being able to serve our community, but also 
help make it some positive changes for the earth. And we both are very adamant about making this something that's for everyone. It's, we want to help and empower people to make small changes and see those um, just multiply in a, in a positive way. So my journey to entrepreneurship is a little forced, but I'm enjoying it. And I am thankful to have this opportunity because I think there's a lot of freedom in it and a lot more chance to take what I have as a dream and put that into practice. So that's, that's basically it. I love that. And, and I think that really it brings up such a good point is sometimes it is not a traditional journey to become a, an entrepreneur. Sometimes it's just, you know, the, the right position was in the right place and you have that background and you're able to make a difference and this was a vehicle to do it. So that's really inspiring. Um, can you tell me a little bit about, you know, maybe something that you're particularly proud of throughout this journey or something that you've achieved as an entrepreneur that you, um, a positive highlight that you can share with the group? We started our business in, well, we started um, getting ready in February of 2020, which was fun and fabulous in the thick of COVID, but it actually ended up being a blessing for us. And so I'm thankful that we were able to make that transition into a viable business during that really rough time. And I'm most encouraged by the support that we received from our community. It's really fun to be able to hear the comments that people have when they come in here and say, oh, I love your store. Thank you that you're here. We love what you're doing. We're really, really excited to have you here. And just being a part of the community and the fabric is really one of the things that I think is my, my favorite part of being an entrepreneur. Um, the other thing that I really think is, is fun and is, that I'm proud of is that I think that we're really offering uh, a service and a product that nobody else does. We do both the installation and all that kind of stuff to help serve people to get these choices implemented in people's lives. And I think we're filling a unique niche that that no one else in our area at least is doing. So I'm, I'm particularly proud of that. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, thank you. That, that's great. And, and I loved, I remember we also were talking previously about the, the sense of community and all these people coming together. Um, can you talk to me about, if, um, so two part question for you. Uh, first, you know, what does it mean to you to be like an eco business? And really would love to hear if there's been any of these unexpected benefits that have come across because you're an, um, an environmentally friendly business. So of course, coming back from the environment, was there anything that you didn't expect that was a benefit by going down this path? I definitely think that there is more openness to us as a business because we have a focus on environmentalism. And I think one of the things that I didn't mention now, but we had talked about previously is there's a lot of folks who are in Ojai particularly who are nonprofit groups or have um, different um, companies or just organizations that are environmentally focused. And it's really nice to be a part of that larger community. And I feel like that we are stepping into that realm, which is really, you know, it's a really tight fabric, but I'd like to expand that. And so kind of be that bridge between, you know, really um, entrenched environmental movements and then making that bridge to accessibility for everyone. So it's really been nice to have that mix of, you know, conservative folks coming in and then super environmental folks coming in and they're all really stoked. And that's, I, I think that's really cool. I, I love being able to be a service to all the community members. Um, changes of oh weight, being an eco business, I think means practicing the environmental changes that we are advocating. So, you know, making changes as far as recycling, but reuse also, we provide a lot of reused items, um, making conscious choices about packaging, about shipping, about where um, different products come from. We support the Trades of Hope, which is 
women owned and also for women in third world countries trying to escape trafficking, poverty, trying to provide medical care for children, all through products that they provide. So, you know, making all of these small choices, like even buying gifts for your friends or family, can be something that can be environmental. So I think that it's just like little things that you can do. You took my next question. I was going to ask what little things can people do? Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. We um, I mean, like all kinds of stuff. You can just, you can make little choices. It's just, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, okay, I'm going to not, I mean, it's, it's been hard with COVID because I'm kind of a hardcore serious cup user. Like this is my cup, but you can't go into a coffee shop and ask them to refill that, which is just a little frustrating, but you know, yeah. things like that. You can make yeah. little things, little adjustments. Little adjustments, that's a great way of saying it. And being able to adjust to, you know, COVID, whatever else is going on in our environment. And if that means we can't bring our, our to-go cups in anymore, there's, um, there's other things we can do. I love that. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about some of the challenges that you have faced, you know, um, in terms of being a business owner and what, um, uh, what have you done to overcome them? So I'm not a natural business. Like I, I actually, I have lots of schooling in my background, but none of it is for business or economics or anything like that. So it's really not my gifting. So for me, the challenges has been trying to navigate all the legal and regulatory requirements that a business takes. Incorporation, tax filing, accounting, bookkeeping, all of those things has been a challenge. And I think the main source of advice I would give to anybody is get good support. And I was thankful to take um, a couple of the Weave classes. I did QuickBooks training. I did the entrepreneurship. And those really helped me get a grasp on these key components that I didn't have the background in. And having a good accountant, super key. Um, but also having a humble attitude has really helped me to be able to rectify the mistakes that I've made. They've been willing to help me to you know, make right the wrongs that I did and like, I misfiled something, I missed a filing, whatever, but being able to say, oh, can you help me? And they have been very helpful. So it's, it's been very nice, but that's, that's been my challenge. That's great. Thank you for also sharing advice. I feel like that is so important. Um, really, really helpful. Uh, so what is, what's next for you Erica for you and your business moving forward we're um we're at a crux right now with you know a lot of action happening with uh you know climate talks and we're coming out of a pandemic slowly but surely what's next for you and your business so we at least right now I'm in the midst of obtaining my photovoltaic installation certification which is a rigorous 58 hour course plus eight hours of OSHA training so that we can design, build, um, repair, expand existing or new solar systems on people's homes or their RVs or off-grid situations and really taking uh, this knowledge and being able to help people with solar power. And I'm super excited about that. It's just something that kind of blows my boat, but... Um, there's a lot of changes that are coming, especially in California, very quickly. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think a lot of people aren't necessarily aware, and a lot of people don't know what to do or how to navigate those changes. And I'm thankful that I have I'm getting that training and I'm able to help people with this new knowledge. So that's that's where I'm going. I know I'm going to be helping my husband with the installation part of that. Um, but yeah, just moving into that solar realm, I think, is our, our next big step. That is really exciting. Congratulations. Thank you so much for sharing all this today. I uh, just took a look into the chat and realized there was a few things that I had missed in here. Um, wanted just to encourage if anybody had any questions for Erica, go ahead and pop them into the chat and we can, we can address that. Um, Michelle, in answer to your question about bringing you know, cups into coffee shops, 
previously you could do, you know, bring in your mug and they would fill it, but because of sanitation, uh, that's something that a lot of shops had stopped doing and might start doing again soon. And uh, Joni, thank you so much for sharing. It sounds incredible. We're so happy to have you here today. Um, thank you for sharing your, your background. Um, we're gonna actually go into breakout rooms in a little bit, unless anyone has any questions for Erica, definitely happy to open the floor. Um, when we go into, okay, we've got a question from Christine who's asking if you can talk a little more about the changes come in California concerning solar. It's a great question. Mm -hmm. There's, um, they're going to be outlawing power, I mean, uh, fossil fuel generators. So I know a lot of people have those for backup power. We, excuse me, we did for the Thomas fire. That's how we kept our refrigerator on. And already there's a lot of generators that you cannot buy in the state of California because of the regulations. And they're actually the most efficient ones, which is kind of curious, but um, yeah. And it's gonna be a challenge trying to find those types of generators when they provide such rich power in a time of emergency, we have installed like automatic transfer switches, stuff like that to keep people's homes running in a time of emergency. And California is gonna be outlawing those. So it's going to be something that is gonna be a solar type generator, which is, um, I mean, solar is wonderful, don't get me wrong. I love it, but it is not necessarily the most efficient form of energy. So, I mean, there's lots of things that are being, you know, innovated right now, battery technology, things like that, but still switching from a, a gas or propane powered generator to a solar generator is, is going to be a difficult transition. I know that they have outlawed, I think, gas powered wee whackers. I mean, that sounds strange or not, but for the landscapers, that's a huge deal. So, you know, now they have to transition to a battery powered system and how do they do that in the field and if they're working eight hours a day. So there's that. Um, a lot of people who have solar on their homes realize that when the grid goes down, their power goes down too. And that's a safety issue. But nonetheless, you thought, if I have a solar system, why don't I have power all the time? that's where the battery backup comes in and those tend to be expensive and then you have to retrofit it back into your system. So there's a lot of different things that uh, I think people aren't necessarily aware of. Also the whole electric vehicle, how they're really encouraging people to buy electric vehicles, which is wonderful. Although the grid can't handle everyone being on an electric vehicle without adding a huge amount of solar and backup power that's able to charge those vehicles on people's homes. So there's that issue. I have a, a rather large family for different circumstances and they don't make a vehicle that would accommodate our needs for our family. So there's just a lot of things that, that I think aren't necessarily considered sometimes in the solar world or the world of let's get rid of you know, fossil fuels and things like that. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that you did a great job. It's very technical. And I think that uh, it, it can be a little bit intimidating. So yes, great job answering that. Thank you. Uh, we had time for just probably one more question before the breakout rooms. Uh, and that's from Irene, thank you. Uh, can you share a little bit about the initial cost of becoming an eco-friendly business and the impact long-term? And if you have any ideas on how small businesses can plan ahead to invest in eco-friendly solutions up front, uh, that's a fabulous, fabulous question. We'd love to hear. Yeah. So one of the things that we did do when we moved into the building where we are is to upgrade half of the lighting system to LED. So LED lights are way more efficient than fluorescent or the traditional incandescent bulbs. And if you can switch your lights to an LED um, style bulb, you will save a ton on energy. And obviously that's, that's an eco-friendly choice. For us, we can only do half of the lighting because it is a tremendous investment in a commercial building to have you know, the traditional fluorescent fixtures exchanged with LED. So we had some money to be able to put into that, but we weren't able to complete that. That's kind of on the to-do list, the, the dreaming when we get rolling kind of thing. Um, 
some other choices we made was we actually don't have a water heater so that we don't have hot water, but that's not a big deal for us personally as a business. It's, it's not a big thing. Um, we also have the landscaping around our building is drought tolerant. So we don't have to put a lot of water into that. I think that's a good choice. And I'm hoping with all the solar knowledge that we can actually put a functional solar array on our roof and tie that into our, our power so that we can be relying on the sun's power during the day. We're only open during the day, so that'd be great. Um, yeah. I love it. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, okay, this is perfect timing. Uh, we're going to go into breakout rooms. I just want to share a little prompt. And I think that that's, you know, making those small changes, like you just suggested, perfect catalyst for this conversation. So we'll take about 20 minutes. We'll go into smaller groups. And the, you know, idea and prompt to, to talk about is, you know, what small changes can you make for your business to be kinder for the planet? And, you know, one thing uh, one of my colleagues, Meredith, brought up yesterday too, please also celebrate some of the changes that you've already made. So what can you do and what can you celebrate that you that you already have done? And, you know, I think the other piece that really ties it back is, you know, what impact do you think that that will have on your community and on your business by making these changes? So excited to hear what you guys all come back with. And we'll get you into some breakout rooms in just a moment. Okay, so we're going to pick back up the recording. So we'd love to hear from everyone. How was your breakout session? Does anybody have any points that they want to share from their conversations? Me personally, I'm thankful to have met the ladies who are in the room and I'm stoked. I'm just, I hope that I'm going to get contact from one of the ladies so I can, you know, use her services. And I just think this is cool. I'm just really stoked that there's a forum for small businesses, especially small women owned businesses. So thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. That's a really good point. I think it's important to acknowledge, you know, from ourselves of taking this time, especially, you know, small business owners, you guys have so much on your plates and to take the time for a Friday morning to stop, reflect and connect and have these, these conversations and connect with one another. Like, thank yourselves for that. So thanks everyone for being here. anyone else have anything they want to share in terms of you know what small changes you might have come up with in order to be more eco-friendly in your business practices or a celebration of something that you're already doing that you're excited about i think that was interesting that um as a retail furniture store owner i was talking to um christine and I, Di Bernardo, I'm sorry if I'm totally butchering your last name, but she's starting a resale shop for um, used items. And so it's interesting to find that connection in terms of, I have a bunch of interior design clients that I can help funnel to her. So that was nice. That's great. Yeah, that's a really good point. Being able to support one another and make these connections. It's camaraderie. There's real connections too of of being a network of small businesses that can work together. That's wonderful. 
anybody else have something to share? Could um say that I got into my room a little bit um, late, but it was great already hearing the ladies discussing uh, how they've used um, and will use um, environmental practices. For me, I can say the platforms that I've used have become totally electronic. I'm in financial services and mm -hmm. almost every carrier that I work with are now accepting online signatures as opposed to transactionally having to go through three and four and five pieces of paper um, to, to get. But one of the things that we found and talked about was that in our personal practice uh, about um, dealing with our finances, even though we are learning some of the things online, it still feels better to write things down. So I think there is a piece where you have permission to still do things and not feel guilty about, you know, a practice that you have um, and know that there are some green businesses out there that are, that are really working to not use up a much um, paper any longer in their practices. And so, and I also like to point out, I'm from Portland, Oregon, born and raised. I think we created the slogan, reduce, reuse, recycle. So go tree huggers. <laughs> Congratulations, that's, that's amazing. It's a, it's a sticky slogan right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that brings up such a great point. I mean, I think that um, we can snowball so easily into saying like, you know, we, we need to go completely paperless and we need to make all of these changes. And when it comes down to it, you know, we can do one small thing, but not something that is going to hurt us in like our personal lives. If we remember things better by writing it out by hand, then like continue with that practice, but make other changes as, you know, where we can. Uh, Julie, I see you have your hand raised. Yeah, my name is Julie. So I own Stick and Stuck. Um, we sell actually eco-friendly stickers made from recycled water bottles. Um, so our whole business principle is about environmentalism, social, and consciously um, creating products. And so I wanted to connect um, too about some of the things that we're doing. And I think one of them actually came through Weave. It's the um, Green Business SBC. So we are working on being green, California green certified. So we have a, um, a coordinator that helps us. We just moved into a new space in the funk zone. Come visit us. We're doing lots of cool things down here. Everything is upcycled. Um, we have events and retail and music and um, uh, um, an art studio that we're doing with all upcycled art. So, um, but that's one thing that we are doing and there's um, initiatives to do that, to participate in this green, um, going green SBC um, and getting a lot of really good information and ways to practically um, change our business to be more green and having a coordinator that will walk you through that, um, through the program makes it really helpful and easy. So that's already outlined for you. So I just wanted to put that out there as a, as a resource if people are interested in it. it. So far, my experience has been really great. That is an incredible resource. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, uh, we just got green certified. So we just had our like celebration two weeks ago. So it has been a good process. And yeah, they've been fabulous with how you can implement changes in order to achieve that certification status. So yeah, definitely visit their website. They're super cool. So plug for that. That's amazing. That brings up a really great point too. Um, uh, at the end of this uh, call, if you would like to be included in uh, your contact information so that we can uh, connect with one another from here, uh, we'll send out a poll that if you can answer um, yes, no, if you would like your, your email and uh, name to be included in sharing with the group. Uh, we can also shoot out an email and we'll include the link to that SBC site too if you want to hear more information. That's a great resource. So we'll keep that open for a little bit. Um, thanks so much for sharing that. Does anybody else have any uh, feedback from their breakout session of, um, of changes or something that they've already done and 
And the, you know, I think the second part of the question too of, of considering what that impact would be on your business, it, um, you know, switching over to LED, how is that going to impact your utility bills or making a change in your suppliers? What is, what is the impact going to look like down the road? Natalie, I see you have your hand raised. Go ahead. Hi. Yeah. Um, one of the ladies, I believe her name was Heather. I can't. Yeah, Heather. Um, she mentioned using um, reusable notebooks. Uh, it's called a rocket book. And she said that you can write and um, with uh, like a pen and then you can, it erases. And so if you do a lot of, um, uh, use a lot of notepads throughout your day of just writing things down um, that you don't have to keep. Um, she said that that was a wonderful thing that she used um, that I'm looking into. Um, I am the owner and winemaker of Wildflower Winery in Ventura. Um, and some changes that I've made recently is to um, provide reusable bottle bags for my local deliveries. And even some people who order from far away, um, I'm really focused on local. I do free delivery in Ventura County. So um, that's, you know, a, a big thing for me is I want people to be able to come back to me with their bag and re you know, refill it so that I'm using less cardboard. Um, also, I'm, I have made candles with the um, bottles previously, and I'd like to do that again. It's just time consuming. <laughs> um, but that's, bottles, glass are um, frustrating to recycle and I know that some of them aren't recycled you know the green glass versus the clear flint glass so um that's just a couple ways that we're starting to give things new life instead of just throwing it in a bin I yeah. love that I, like, I actually love have one of your bags and use them so they, they oh. go and then they get reused again so I actually brought one to a like potluck recently yeah thanks Allie yeah um, I actually know that uh, Teen Challenge in Ventura, they have a project where they're reusing wine bottles for um, like gifts and they put LED lights inside. So just a thought, I don't know. I don't know if you knew that, but they sometimes can upscale them too. And then it provides a means of providing uh, funds for Teen Challenge. So that's great. Thank you. Um, someone was asking that as well as, you know, the customers, people who drink wine at home, they, you know, have all this glass and they were wondering what they can do with it. So that's a great um, way for other people to send that over too. Thank you. Very cool. I love all the sharing of resources. Ruini, is, did I pronounce that correct? Yes. Hi. Hi. Hello, everybody. I'm new to these meetings, um, but I wanted to share. Um, uh, I forgot her name, but she's from View. Um, v, right? Is that how you say? Uh, she gave me, uh, so I'm actually uh, changing my, um, I have a lot of business experience, uh, but this uh, business is uh, very new to me. I'm uh, selling natural uh, products uh, made out of natural ingredients, um, more skincare right now. I have four products. Um, I worked with a um, uh, company in India. So I uh, didn't have a lot of control of the packaging. But one of the things uh, that I'm going to look into is uh, more environmental friendly, reusable packaging. Uh, so I got a, uh, got information from uh, we, uh, there's a company in uh, Ventura. So uh, definitely I want to look into that, the refill. Um, and looks like they do some other things. So um, uh, I'm open to if any of you guys have any resources because I'm very new to this um, field uh, like I'm interested in regulations and like uh, resourcing um, like I want to make uh, my products here I thought that would be a good uh, uh, opportunity for people here uh, so 
uh, I just wanted to kind of share that information and see if any of you guys have any resources you want to share with me. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. A, a great point too, you know, making the product, but then there's also the packaging that goes into it. And you have this whole life cycle of different places where you can make the product locally. There's still the consideration of what are you going to do with the packaging to get there I, at some point distribution and, you know, shipping and all these other things. It's a very long pipeline and there's a lot of different places on there. So yes, absolutely. And I think that kind of goes back to that when we, send out that email with, with a different contact information for people to stay in touch if you have some resources and able to network. That's really what you know these mornings are all about. So that's great. Thanks for sharing. So we have just about five minutes left. If anybody has any, any thoughts, and this was really, really inspiring. I just wanted to say thank you for everyone for being here. You know, I think that there was a lot of fabulous ideas that came up and um, and hopefully we can all stay in touch and continue the conversation. You know, Earth Month is a, is a well, I guess Earth Day, Earth Week, Earth Month. It's not just April. But it's, this is a time of year that you really start seeing more reports about this, but this is an ongoing conversation. And, you know, hopefully a lot of these things are kind of planting some seeds that we can take into you know, our day-to-day our -day practices and make some commitments to ourselves and the planet and um, do things sustainably and thoughtfully, which at the end of the day, that's what we're all trying to do. Does anybody have any other final thoughts so we can have wonderful plans for, for the, the weekend and, and get our, our uh, a wrap to a, a really effective week? Um, I just wanted to say something. I thought I saw something way, way, way early in the chat room about refills and the sanitation. Um, for us, we do provide refills on certain um, soaps and raw materials and things like that. And you are always welcome to bring your own container. That's always been our thing is, you know, let's try to reduce the amount of containers that we have on the planet. Definitely bring it in. Sanitation, I'm not worried about unless you are. And happy to talk to, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher your name, Ruini. Um, anyway, contact me directly. I'd totally love to have a conversation with you about, um, you know, different sourcing of products and things like that. I've done a lot of research on it because of our refills. But that's it. So thank you. This has been wonderful. Thank you so much, Erica. We're so appreciative of you coming today. Really, you know, sharing all of your, your background and and making it accessible for this this conversation because I know you have a huge history so thank you so much for coming we're really so grateful to have you here today.